the only route, the, the, the big numbers are in respect of overturned convictions. Hmm. And I think somebody referred to 4% that's been paid, paid out. out so this, this is, yeah. The fact is it was going nowhere uh, in terms of uh, the exoneration uh, costs. And the whole thing opened up subsequent to the Mr. Bates TV programme. Until that point, no headway was being, was being, was, was being made. So uh, uh, I think that's worth understanding. In um, her letter and file notes... Sarah Mumby says this, uh, this is dated 21st of February. She says, we discussed the post office operational funding, not compensation funding. She goes on to say, I'm able to give you, the Secretary of State, the strongest reassurance that I did not at any point suggest to Mr Staunton or to imply to him in any way whatsoever that there should be a delayed compensation payments for postmasters. I do not believe they should be delayed and no minister has ever asked me to make delays. Does that assertion by Sarah Mumby undermine your assertions? Uh, well, it, it does. If you, it, her file note is written a, a year and a day, a, a, a year and a month after, after my file note, mm. so it's, it's not a contemporary file, contemporaneous file note by any means. It's written with the purpose of answering this, this point. So, I'm not casting any aspersions uh, on Ms. Mumby, but that's, that's worth fully un understanding. Do you think so, Sarah Mumby may have misremembered? There's a lot, there, there are a lot of issues going around about uh, misremembering, lying, etc., and uh, that's not what I want to get into. I'm just explaining what I know. I'm not, I'm not here to guess. Uh, but, 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 but on the else. face of it, then, it appears that Sarah Mumby may have walked away from your conversation with a different interpretation to you. That I, would be a, perhaps I, a general I think the fact is, when you talk about three levers, it's, it's, this is not a PhD in, in accounting. This is three very simple mm. issues that we're talking about. Well, on so this, I don't think there's much room for, for misinterpretation. But Sarah Mumby does say in her file note, 21 February 2024, that there is, quote, complete firewall between the two budgets for compensation and operations. But you're telling the committee this afternoon that it's not as simple as that. No, it's not. It's not. I mean, it's, as I say, the, if uh, now, so now that we've made all these issues on, on, on exoneration, the fact is the amount of money held in Treasury as, uh, within this firewall ought to have been increased significantly because of the exoneration payments. So, so it's not a number that's fixed. And equally, as I say, if it goes down, more money is available for whatever, NHS, tax cuts or whatever it is. The Secretary of State goes on to say, um, she goes on to present her appointment letter or her priorities letter to you dated 29th of June last year. And that says that you are to provide fair compensation to those affected by the historic failures and in particular to inject pace into the delivery of compensation for those with overturned convictions. That instruction sounds like it's at odds with the impression you walked away with from the conversation with Sarah Mumby? Absolutely. Because, because Ms Mumby was talking about the financing issues within Treasury uh, and uh, I got the very clear message that, uh, well, I think I put in the file that money, money is tight. I mean, it was... All I was doing was representing what I was told. I mean, of course, I just thought I'd done this file note. It would never hmm. see the light of the day other than talking to, to, to Nick about it. And, having, and I said, we're going to proceed with compensation and I will take the consequences. So, um, so, the, signal, so the signal... It wasn't what other reason would I have done it. It's not, it wasn't done for trying to have a discussion in a year's time with the Secretary hmm. of State. It was just done as a matter of routine because the words were so odd. So, but the signals that you received were different to the letter of what the Secretary of State laid out. Correct. So there was an ambiguity. Yes, I think, uh, as you said, the, the, you used the phrase not in a wink. I, I was left with the, with the issue that uh, if I could pull any levers, I should. And actually, I felt it was not an unreasonable lever to pull in respect of um, the horizon replacement, but it was, I was not going to go anywhere near uh, a morally wrong decision not to not to pay our postmasters and not to do anything that impacted the statutory inquiry. Nick Reed, in his letter to me um, last week, says, I've personally never been instructed to delay on compensation, nor have any of my leadership team, to my knowledge. It, it sounds like he can write that because of the conversation that you had with him 
after your conversation with Sarah Monk. He can write that because I said to him, we're not going to, we're, we're, no, we're, we're not going to do anything that's not the morally right decision of, of, of continuing to pay compensation. And I did say to him, and if anything, we should accelerate it. So you stand by Absolutely. what you've said in public about the message you received from a senior civil servant that compensation payments should be slowed down to minimise the financial liability. Yes, I do. Mr Lady. Um, your, your bio, Mr Stoughton, you were previously chairman of WH Smith, the Phoenix Group, and Ashdade Group, vice chairman of Legal and General, and uh, also served on the boards of IDA, NB, Sky B, Ladbrokes and Standard Bank. How do you feel about the attack on your honesty, attack on your character, your credibility, basically trashing Indeed. your career? I mean, basically, even in this session we've had today, you've been classified unequivocally as a liar. Indeed. How do you feel about that? Well, I think... Uh, I don't want to blow my own trumpet. But I've been the chairman of four big public companies. I've been the deputy chairman of Legal and General, which is big, the biggest insurance company in, in, the, in the UK. Uh, I've been an executive director of uh, both Granada and, and ITV, uh, and a non-executive, say, at B Sky B. So I do have, and I was a partner in Price Waterhouse before I did those jobs. So in terms of governance, uh, I've had experience going back since till the age of 32 in terms of what it was the right thing to do in governance. So I, I feel as if I have some experience in this whole area. And I, and I, wouldn't, and I wouldn't have been considered a successful chairman if I'd not been considered a successful oh, yeah. chairman. I wouldn't have been appointed to Smiths and the Capital and Counties. How do you intend to tackle these accusations from senior politicians and uh, senior executives at the post office? It's not good. I mean, what I, what I have done is... Uh, stand up for the postmasters. In fact, if you don't mind, uh, the, post, the, the post office have had a chance to make a number of representations to you, which I hadn't realised that, that I had the opportunity to do. So I haven't made a representation. I, so I wouldn't mind reading out for a minute my views to make a representation to you compared to all the representations the post office have made, if you don't Chair. mind, Mr Chair. Right, well, my statement is... What happened to these poor postmasters and their families is a tragedy and a scandal. They have been failed time and time again by a whole host of British institutions who are supposed to be there to protect the citizen and ensure fair play. We all know that there was, we all know that there was inaction all round by the judicial system, the government, Whitehall, and particularly inside the post office, until the ITV drama, Mr. Bates versus the post office, and there was a rocket then put under things. The Secretary of State, senior civil servants, and post office officials are asking us to believe that everything was going swimmingly all along when it damn well wasn't. We all know, we all know that things were moving far too slowly and you've heard from three postmasters today who said it even more eloquently than, than I could. And the reason why people have latched on to what I said in the Sunday Times was that finally someone was being honest about how deep-seated the problems were and why nothing was being done. I still think that more could be done, at least to make compensation more generous and the process of getting justice less bureaucratic. But I will at least have achieved something if the sunlight of disinfectant, which the Secretary of State so approves of, means that government now lives up to its promises. What the public wants to know is why was everything so slow, and we've talked about the 4%, and why does everything remain so slow? I've spoken up on matters of genuine public concern have been fired and now subject to a smear campaign. So you're quite right. And I've just given you the background for why we have it. No, I'm fine. OK, Mr Chapman. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, uh, Mr Staunton, um, can you characterise the department's oversight? Um, so of the... It's OK, just a background noise there, yeah. 
uh, department's oversight uh, with the post office when it comes to the redress scheme. How, how much were the sorry the, the department office, was, was terribly it, sorry the post was the department hands on or was it seen as being at a distance? I'm terribly sorry. The post office it being hands on in respect of which what? Yeah, in, in terms of the, that relationship between the department and the, the post office, did you feel that they were hands on in terms of? Uh, that, that you know that, that discussion that you might have had out with some of the, the are you talking about compensation in particular? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, the truth is that uh, we decide. I mean, I said to Nick, we were going to carry on, and I'll take the consequences. We just continued with that, and I think Simon Ricaldron talked about the processes, and I don't dispute anything he said in terms of uh, how, how all that was managed. But but did that include? Um Discussions with the, the Secretary of State and with ministers. Uh, you know how, how how did all that happen? Uh, no, I think it was all. No, the, to, to be fair, I think all of that was done at, at a lower level in terms of the minutiae of the compensation. It was. Um, I never talked to the the, minister, the, the postal minister at all about right. having any concerns at, at, at that operating type level. My, my, my main concern. Well, there there are. Two schemes. There are three issues with regard to postmasters. We'll come on to the last one, which is current postmasters and how they're viewed within the organisation, which you've had a very good airing of my file notes. Uh, but, the, but the first two schemes relate, firstly, to overturned convictions. And uh, the issue there is, is that it was going uh, t terribly slowly. Exoneration was not uh, on the agenda, despite the fact that one could no other way was, was this going to be dealt with because all the file notes I saw was that uh, there, is, there are all these comments about postmasters being guilty as charged whether it's Richard Taylor or Nick Reed in his letter to the Lord Chancellor or even the postmasters uh, saying it that the, the, the guilty as charged I just don't accept because the file notes I see is the vast majority of postmasters who have not come forward uh, to this issue is because they do not want to be tried all over again. They just don't trust the system. Uh, and uh, that's the first issue. The second issue is, I think Mr. Holling, Minister Hollingrate did a terrific thing to put the £600,000 uh, offer down there in, in September in terms of uh, overturned conviction. But actually, there was a very low take-up. And, and I had said to Nick Reed, we must get the message across to him. It's got to be, it's got to be seen to be generous, i.e. He's a million pounds. And I know that sounds a lot of money, but actually, I said I wasn't sure that the, 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 the British public would would have such an issue with that. As far, they would far prefer to be generosity than to be tight-fisted and, and, and anxious. So, and then the second issue was related to other postmasters. We mustn't forget that on overturned convictions, the progress has been lamentable. But in terms of the other claims, postmasters uh, have got... Uh, uh, problems and the, the it, I think you've, you've touched on them all actually, which is the, the, the forms are, are impossible to understand. I'm an accountant, and I, you know, I, I struggle with it with, without le legal advice, without all the information uh, that, that you need. The, the, if you read the file notes, the attitude of the legal people, Helga Smith, talking to our postmasters about aggressive, hostile questioning, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been a massive issue. And uh, it's largely behind us. But as a result of that, one can see from all the uh, uh, comments that actually many postmasters, because of that hostile attitude, have settled for far less than they think is reasonable. And Mr. Bates was a perfect example. He's obviously not one to be uh, adversely cowered by hostility, and he stuck out. But the offer, as he said, was a fraction of what she thinks is reasonable. So whether it's the overturned convictions, which we can all focus on going forward, there has been a massive problem. And I think what we need to do is not only to have uh, a speeding up of overturned convictions and a, and a bigger number than 600,000, I think someone touched on from the committee, shouldn't we reopen all these uh, issues around the other postmaster schemes, because postmasters have um, settled for what far less than they think is reasonable for all the issues. I think 
I'd be repeating it if, if, if I uh, dealt but, but, with it again. You, you mentioned about the pace of the payments that were, were made and the compensation payments and so on, but you were chairman, and yeah, I'm just wondering in terms of that, I mean, Mr Lavery has read out your, your CV in terms of the amount of experience that you've had in various other companies. Surely it looks like in the post office the shit was hitting the fan. And you know the the board just seemed to be you know just allowing things to happen. No, no, that's, Did you that's feel that there, there was sufficient grasp of how important this was in terms of the the, the board meetings uh, they did have? Uh, absolutely. Well, of course, I don't sit on. It's chaired by Mr. Tisbell, the, the compensation uh, committee. But after about two or three of them, I went to say to Nick, "Look, this situation seems bureaucratic, pedantic, and most of all." unsympathetic and we've got to do something about it and he said well look that's a management issue you should leave that with me we'll progress it so the answer is I didn't just ignore it I actually had a word with the chief executive that this needs to be uh, dealt with and as you and I've been a chairman of many companies and the answer is it's not just a popularity contest you have to say things if you're not happy and ask for things to be changed and, uh, and, I, and I said that to the chief executive Right. And maybe just one final please. question, yes, please. just on the position of the post office as a whole. Do, do you think they should have been or, and still be part of the, the process, or should they be withdrawn and removed from that completely? They should be removed completely. It's, it's, it's pretty obvious. I, I think people talked about the, the, the culture. Well, you saw the notes from the uh, postmaster directors, and I think it was said that I somehow invented it. They rang me on a Sunday and said, look, uh, they'd, they'd mentioned it to me about six weeks before. They were clearly highly disturbed on the matter. And I said, look, the problem is that you're both being investigated uh, by, the, by the post office. If, if, if you come out now, it's going to look as if you know, you're, you're conflicted. Sure. So uh, should we just not get this behind us before we really pick it up? And in mid-January, they, they, they'd had enough. So they rang me on a Sunday and said, this has got to be tackled, Henry. Uh, I said, what I will do is I will prepare a file note of all your comments tonight. I will send it to you. I want you to agree every single word in this file note before I send it off. And they both came back. Now, unfortunately, it's on my post office email account. But if, if you asked, you would see that that correspondence took place. So this is not something that uh, anyone can say... I invented and it was not agreed. I'm a, I'm a stickler in that regard. So they agreed every single word in that. I sent it through to Nick Reed and I said I want to discuss this at the next board meeting. And the problem was that Nick Reed sent a copy of it. I don't know if you've seen the correspondence. He sent a copy of it to the, to the legal director particularly, whom the two postmaster directors were saying had way too much power and was using it as an instrument. I can't remember what the phrase was. It wasn't an instrument of terror, but it was an instrument of some way of control. And um, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was an appalling thing to do. And, of course, the two postmaster directors were absolutely appalled in terms of governance that that was sent to the people that were being critical of. And that's why one of the postmasters, Saf Elliott, sent that absolutely stinging note to Nick Reed. If you thought my note of what they said to me was harsh, all the, all the phrases that were made. The note to, uh, from, from uh, Elliot to uh, Reed was, uh, was an absolute zinger. So, um, you know, it was, ba it was bad governance and it was really, we really badly <coughs> let down the postmaster directors. And I would say, actually, they've been very brave, these postmaster directors coming out to say what they did, because actually, it could, I did say to them, this could impact your business. People will, could, you could lose post office. You, you, you. But they felt they ought to represent the views of the postmasters in, in the organisation, and they were prepared to do it. And I thought, I thought that was pretty brave. And I thought, therefore, for me to duck and not take on their cause would have been cowardice when they would taken such a brave decision. So that's why. And I knew... I guess it might end up almost certainly in me being fired, but I thought the, th the important thing to do is to do the right thing, and, that, and that's why I did it, uh, because uh, I didn't want to feel that I would act in a different way and show less bravery than the two men involved. I have to say they were still braver, because, of course, they, they were going to lose money, business, 
they could lose money or business from it, which of course doesn't, doesn't apply to me. Mr. Gulls. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Staunton, Mr. Lavery touched on it earlier that some very serious allegations have been made both by Mr. Cresswell and by Mr. Tidswell related to your conduct and that an investigation is currently underway of which you were informed in November. Can I just check, first of all, that you share those recollections that in November you were informed that you were being investigated for your behaviour and conduct? Yes, there is an investigation. What, what there is, actually, is uh, Mr. Reid fell out with his HR director and she produced a, spec a speak up document which was 80 pages thick. Uh, and within that was one paragraph there about comments that I allegedly made. So this was an investigation not into me, this was an investigation made into the chief executive, Nick Reed. There's that one paragraph, and you could, you could say actually it was about politically in incorrect comments that are attributed to me, which I strenuously deny. This was not an investigation into me, this was an investigation based on the 80-page document prepared by uh, the HR director. So, okay, so you're, you're obviously accepting, oh, sorry, obviously you've made it clear that you uh, disagree with the allegations and you're obviously currently going through an investigation. Of course, I wouldn't expect you to comment on a live investigation into yourself. Can I just ask, have you been interviewed at this stage? Yes, I have, yeah. About and, only last, and only last week I wrote to uh, the barrister giving her further comments. So the fact that somehow I have not cooperated with this investigation uh, is totally wrong. The point of the call with uh, the SID was that this 80-page document was actually taking a terrible toll on Nick Reed. He said, I'm not being supported by the board, uh, and this is, this is just bad news for me and my family. I'm going to resign tomorrow. I've just had enough. Because I was about to say, the chair did ask yeah. the question earlier, Mr Reed, had he ever considered resigning? <laughs> he said, no. You're saying in a conversation, vocal, verbal conversation, he had got to a point where he felt that maybe he was going to have to The 80-page report, of course, uh, alleges that from the HR director, not my words, that uh, Nick had re had, was going to resign because he was unhappy with his pay. She's put that in this, in this document. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'm absolutely positive. Because you'll understand that the concern here is that we've had... You're obviously... Your comment, which I will come to initially, yeah. about obviously this... The, the, or your interpretation of yeah. your meeting with Miss Mumby. That has led to, obviously, communication between, well, via the newspapers, between yourself and the Secretary of State for Business and Trade, essentially, about your dismissal. We're now adding Mr Reid into this story. You'll accept that for sub-postmasters and postmistresses across the country, this is starting to look like a complete shambles. and utter shambles, Absolutely. to be perfectly frank. It's probably the place where I've been able to... People be shocked I was that polite. But, like, an utter shambles in... How is this looking? And now we've got another name in the ring here. And so this only produces more mud, more grey area, when actually, as again, what the point of this session is, and I appreciate your contrition in what you said earlier about the situation regarding sub postmasters and postmistresses, that it, this will only add further delay, further lack of attention to the victims of this massive injustice in our, in our uh, criminal and civil sector of law, and so do you regret now that we're in this situation where we're having trial by media and an HR dispute by media, which seems also utterly new to me, when actually it's drawing attention away from the Mr Bases and others? I couldn't agree with you more. This, this, this should all be about the postmasters and their families and how their lives have been wrecked. That's what all of this should be about and, no, and nothing else. The rest is just... Flim flam. I know we can talk about these issues. I don't want to play them down, but that's what this is all about: is, is the postmasters. So I don't disagree with you one bit. And can but I just can quickly I just... clarify one further thing? So obviously you're currently under investigation for allegations that you've said you, you claim is a paragraph and eight-page document. Yeah, paragraph. 2. Is your understanding that Mr. Reed is also under an investigation? Indeed. Yes. He's yes. in his investigation for this. This investigation is primarily into Nick Reed and the 80-page dossier. OK, so well, at the moment now we've got yourself as the former chairman, who was the current chairman at the time, being investigated. We've now got the CEO allegedly now under investigation as well. 
that's blown my. I was not expecting that answer. Okay, so <laughs> like, okay, so we've got. Was, we've was, got wasn't that made plain to you the, this investigation? That's the, the first thing I've heard of Mr. Reed's alleged, and I will use that word, alleged investigation. <coughs> but obviously, you're claiming that, and I'll probably let the chair come back on that one because. He'll have, he's, he's been here longer than me to make sure I don't cross the line, uh, what I say. That, that, that doesn't mean I'm less shocked. They're yeah, shocked, good, OK. Uh, well, can Going I back to very quickly the yes, meeting sure. with Miss Mumby, I suppose the question I have is, if you have taken the nod and the wink that you are to, um, sorry, to slow down compensation to sub postmasters and postmistresses to limp it into an election, if that is how you felt you were instructed... My question is two part. A, why not speak up about it until after you've been released from office? And B, surely you would have felt the need to resign if you felt that the system was indeed working against you in this way to take a stand and to call out what you thought was malpractice by those in Whitehall towards making sure that compensation was received. You'd understand that the fact this has come out after you've been dismissed, would le just leads to thinking this is a bit of he said, she said. Well, and that, of course, is there's quite a lot of element to that. The, the, the point that uh, I would make is that uh, I said to Nick, we should not do anything to pull the lever on the inquiry, and neither, because we couldn't, that would be against the law, and neither should we pull the lever in respect of uh, compensation, and indeed I said we should increase it. But there was the lever for the biggest amount which related to the Horizon uh, investment, which I, was, I felt put under notice that actually we needed to just be doubly sure, triply sure, that we were getting it right in respect of uh, that investment. And Mr Staunton, obviously, we've heard again from witnesses earlier that one of the things that you're being investigated related to is you trying to shut down a whistleblowing investigation yes. into yourself. Do you deny those accusations? Yeah, let me just explain what happened. As I said, uh, it, was, it was not the first time that Nick had threatened to resign, but I could clearly see uh, he was uh, under, and, and you'll see it's in, it's in this 80-page report, which is not, not my report, um, but he had said to me the same things in terms of his salary, so, but it's there in, in the document. But, but the key point was that I could see he, he was in a very pressurised position. This, this, is, this is a tougher job being CEO of the post office, I have to say, than all the other companies that I've chaired, just because of the my myriad of problems that it has. So on top of this, he was being, being investigated on, on an 80-page dossier. And it was, he was really quite upset about it. And I felt, I felt it was affecting his, his, his emotional and mental state. It was that serious. So he was not supported by the board, so I said to him, look, I will go and talk to the SID. I'm conflicted, but I will go and talk to the SID to see if we can, this myriad charge sheet, if we can just, we'll, Nick, you've got to face up to the big ones, but, but you know, he said, as he said, be, I'll be wiped out from the business for four weeks if we go on like that. So we'll just focus on the big ones, but, but that's a matter for Ben, our SID, to give us a view on. So I rang Ben, I said, look, this is a, uh, a chief executive that I'm very worried about. This is uh, uh, some way of dealing with him. We've got to show him some support if we can actually... It's, because to, to extent, I thought the HR director was a be, negotiating a better exit package. I mean, that's, that, that was my assessment when I looked at some of the things that she was talking about. So, And I said that to Ben. So I said we should reduce the, the charge sheet on Nick to start with. We can come back to the others we feel is relevant. But this man just hasn't got the time or the inclination to deal with the full charge sheet. So can you just look at it? It's, it's, it needs to be, you're conflicted, Henry. Like, I want the, the four lines on me. I'm very happy to, to talk about. I've, I've, I've completely rejected them. Uh, so this, as I say, this wasn't a big investigation into me. This was a big investigation into Nick, and I didn't realise you weren't aware of that. Oh, you've certainly made news today, <laughs> Mr Thornton, I'm sure you've that. Mr Titswell informed us that I think in response to Mr Higginbottom, apologies if I got the wrong individual, maybe Miss Master, that, that he felt once you, he had personally informed you of the investigation that would get into you in November that your behaviour had changed and effectively, I can't quote him perfectly, but had become more erratic and... Yeah, I saw that. Say, uh -huh. 
Do you think that's a fair characterization, no, or do you dispute no, that from Mr. No, I, I, I completely dispute it. And I think that um, what happened was, as you'll see from the documentation, it was actually the whole thing did go uh, get a bit difficult once the postmasters got hold of me, and I wasn't prepared to duck it, but I did a file note and said, we've got to tackle this. At this point, uh, things did get very difficult, and with, within 10 days, uh, uh, I'd, I'd left the company. So I think that was a far bigger issue. But I'm, I'm not an erratic, uh, ch you know, if, if I'd been an erratic individual when it comes to business, uh, I wouldn't have been the chairman or deputy chairman or main board director uh, of all these companies. That's, that's just so, not how I am. Mr Staunton, I feel like there may be another drama, Mr Reed and Mr Staunton versus the post office coming down the track <laughs> at some stage in the future, because... Well, I don't... I might want to say, but what I would say is... My, my, I, oh, honestly, I'm burning away. Um, what I suppose I'm trying to get to the bottom two of here is, is it right, really, in this myriad of mess? Should the politics and the politicians who have been embroiled in this, or dragged into this, isn't it right that we really put these individuals to one side? Absolutely. And that they're no longer part of this discussion, and we can move on, and I mean the Secretary of State for Business and Trade, and just say that she's, you're not interested in firing in her direction, no. and now this is about your fight with the Post Office to clear your name and reputation, for clarity to be brought around Mr Reid now and what his current situation is with the Post Office, whether or not he is under investigation or not, and whether he is wanting to resign, bearing in mind he also took the oath and said... He, he goes, sorry, sorry, Chair. Isn't the, isn't the point here now that Mr Bates has got a point that maybe the post office needs to be buried and actually sold off because he said it's such a mess and the fact we've got the former chairman and the CEO apparently both under investigation and both well, one particularly wants to resign, isn't it? Maybe is, is it time for the post office to go? Well, Mr. Bates, right? That's a, that's, a, that's a really good question. And, and what I said in January, again, it didn't find favour with uh, the UKGI. I, the only route through this uh, for me is, is, is demutualisation of the post office. The answer is where I think the postmasters have a stake in the business. And, that, and I haven't got my mind right quite how, how we would have done it. but. Uh, the, the action, we cannot have the postmaster. This got nothing. This, this should all the discussion should all be about the postmasters and justice yes. for those who have been convicted. And we mustn't forget a reasonable living for those that work within the post office business now, which is actually not a sufficiently remunerated business. That, that's what this, this whole thing uh, should should be about. And, and, and so it shouldn't be about another another TV program about Mr. Reeves. Sort of, it's, it's, it's a pointless. Uh, waste of time. That doesn't actually further the cause of the postmasters one bit. So Mr Bates is, is right. I'm not sure that Amazon is right. I think actually I think it would be more powerful if we had a deep mutualisation. That's why I wanted at least one more post office director on the board. My preference would be to have two and then we'd have four postmaster directors on the board which would be the start of that journey and, uh, and I would have You've seen in the file note, I would have two of them actually managing a committee that was all about the culture with, within this department. <coughs> I would have one of them chairing the, the remuneration committee because I think you know, that would actually sort out some of the issues you've raised about bonuses, backdating pay deals, putting uh, multipliers on all the bonuses when they should only go to, on, to objectives, which I think you covered all. Because, because I think on the governance on REM is a really big point which you raised because actually when we came to see you last time, we just talked about that TIS scheme. All the other issues about backdating, backdating the postmasters, uh, applying the wrong multipliers to the wrong bonuses, all of those stuff w was not covered at, at that meeting. So I think... Um, uh, but you understand quickly, Mr Thornton, I promise, Chair, the last thing. You, you appreciate that with the former chairman, who was then the current chairman, and the CEO, now apparently both under investigation, Sub postmasters and postmistresses are going to think they are literally bottom of the pile when it comes to them being focused no, on when the two most senior people in the in the organisation are at war with its with its war with its employer. Well, I, I, I wouldn't classify it as war. I mean, this was a complaint. It's not harmony. Of course, it's not. Of course, and actually, it doesn't fall the further the cause of the postmaster. That is the that is the key point about all of this is that we need to get back to talking. Uh, 
uh, and, and I think the committee covered it, but all, lots, all sorts of other issues came to be involved, and I think we'll talk about the SID process, etc., which I'm very happy to do. Yeah, sorry but, to but, it's, but it is mainly about the postmasters. That, that is why I went public in the Sunday Times article. And one of the problems, of course, if you go to the Sunday Times, is, of course, you lose control of the narrative to a certain extent, and the focus of the article became much more about government and not about the yes. postmasters. And, and I think it's the, that fair the, to say that we've not That was the heading, the... and it was also the thrust of the article. And of course, but but you, you, do, you lose... You lose but you've you lose helped control. us fill out the picture today. Mr Higginbottom. Thank you, Chair. I actually want to stick on that theme about... I don't feel we've currently got the answers to, to I'm, everything. I'm terribly that, sorry, sorry. I don't think we've got the answers that we need as a committee yet about what happened. Um, so I'm going to ask you some quite direct questions. I appreciate short, pithy answers if possible. We've currently got the Secretary of State, the Minister, the Senior Civil Servant, the Chief Executive, Board Members, other officials in the Department of Business and Trade, all saying that they wanted to expedite compensation claims. And Mr Staunton, with due respect, you are the only person sat there saying anything to the contrary. Could it not be that you misinterpreted the conversation? And if you didn't, why with all those conversations that must have taken place over the course of your tenure as chair, would you not confirm and clarify with anyone? Yeah, well I think that uh, your committee it's itself to talk about expediting compensation, that was not the view expressed by postmasters that this process would be expedited. It was lamentably slow until Mr. Bates. It was lamentably slow, the 4% you've quoted. You know, this was uh, uh, not being ex expedited one bit. But some of that included a period where HSS was the post office's responsibility. Sorry? Some of that was when HSS was under the post office as a responsibility, and you were the chairman. Yes, well, I think... That so did you fail in getting compensation well, as chairman? No, because I think... We need to distinguish between the various schemes. Uh, my main gripe is with the overturned convictions and the lamentably slow pro process we've had there. I think I went well, back to... To be fair, and, Mr Staunton, that feels like a smoke and mirrors answer. So don't look over here. I only want you to look at here. Yeah. No, I'm not how very many happy. I'm, I'm quite happy with the, the, the progress on HSS uh, and the other schemes. Uh, I don't think... Uh, it, it could have been faster, but it's not my, it's not my biggest gripe. I, as chairman, I mean, the, the executives run compensation, and I thought it was the, pro, the progress was adequate, as, as you had given back to you from, by Simon Ricardo. And so I, I, I don't have a gripe with that, but I have a huge gripe with the fact that overturned convictions was so slow, and we were getting nowhere on exoneration. We were told it's not possible, and suddenly we had Mr Bates and all of a sudden exoneration was possible. Which includes the period you were responsible for... Sorry? Which includes the period you were responsible for Post Office Limited, but yep. you don't seem to want to accept that your organisation, when you were chair, was part of the problem. Well, I, I think that... Uh, I, 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 do, I do think the Post Office was part of the problem, but I don't think the compensation for HSS, etc., could be considered slow. I mean, I think the postmasters made a point that it could have been faster, and I think that's a not unfair categorization. But it wasn't uh, slow. Uh, so, I, so I think as a, as, okay. as a chairman, when, if, if something is going wrong, the first person to deal with it should be the chief executive. If it's going terribly wrong, the chairman has to have a word with the chief executive and say, this is terribly wrong, we need to sort it. I didn't feel that the progress on HSS was terribly slow and therefore needed okay. a chairman intervention. In your introductory meeting with Ms Mumbe, you described it earlier on as so unusual as to warrant sending a note to yourself. At what point did you then raise what had been spoken to you about by Ms Mumbe with the Secretary of State or the Minister or another senior official? Well, I raised it, I raised it with Nick to say, actually, my assessment is... Uh, he asked me, what do you want me to do with it? And I said, we should carry on uh, full steam ahead with the inquiry and compensation. If uh, we get feed feedback that we've uh, either misspent 
public money or we were being too quick, I would take take the consequences. So it was a it was actually quite a brave decision on, on, on my part to take that decision. But you made a decision not to raise it with Secretary of State, Minister, or indeed the official that you'd had the conversation with. No, I think that uh, I have to take action on on the, the facts as I find them, and I took the action which was that we would we we would not slow in those two areas. So that. That meeting with Ms Mumble was in January. On Thursday the 23rd of March in 2023, the Post Office Minister, Minister Hollingrake, made a statement to the House of Commons, I assume as Chairman of the Post Office, you would watch proceedings in Parliament, and he said, we certainly, certainly intend and expect to make payments much, much faster than that, referencing the August 2024 deadline. So you then heard, despite in January thinking things were confused, maybe the government was slow, and you heard the minister made clear at the dispatch box that he wanted to do things quickly. Did you have a conversation with either the minister or the secretary of state or a DBT official after that point? Because, because I'd said we should still go ahead in terms of our spend on the inquiry and compensation other than legal fees on, on, on the inquiry, uh, I was not uncomfortable with uh, the decision we'd taken. So no, no is the answer, Mr Staunton? No is the answer to what? that you didn't have a conversation with ministers... Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't have a conversation. Despite the fact that at the dispatch box of the House of Commons, ministers made very clear they wanted to accelerate payments. Yes. Uh, so uh, even though you could see a discrepancy uh, uh, between... Anything that accelerates you, well, payments is good Would you respect, me? Mr Stoughton, yeah, sure. even though you'd seen a discrepancy between what you thought you'd been told and what ministers were saying at the dispatch box, you still decided not to say anything to the only shareholder... I was all for anything that accelerates payments to, to, to postmasters on and any scheme, and particularly we now need it on uh, overturned convictions, I'm, I'm supportive of. So when the minister said we're going to further accelerate payments, I was uh, all in favour of it. Yes, but the point is, Mr Sullivan, you went on record and said the direct opposite, that you'd been told to delay payments. In July... At an urgent question, I think from the uh, right honourable member who sat behind you, there was an urgent question about the high tea rising scandal, and Minister Hollingrake said again um, that they wanted to speed up compensation. So you had a conversation in January that you got one interpretation of. In March, in the House of Commons, it was made very clear that we wanted to proceed faster. In July, it was made clear we wanted to proceed faster. Did you in July speak to the Secretary of State no, I was or quite Minister Hollingrake as no. the Postal Affairs Minister quite, or I'm, UK Government I'm, Investments I'm, I'm, I'm or quite, any senior official? I was quite happy with speeding up. That that was just, just fine by me. You, I'm not asking don't, if don't you were happy I didn't, with it, Mr Storm. I didn't, I'm not asking if you were happy with it. Yeah. I'm asking whether you raised your concerns that you thought there was a view that compensation should be delayed. The point I'm making is that having uh, heard what Ms Mumby said, I decided that we should continue as they were. So I didn't have any concerns that we were not paying uh, postmasters quickly enough. Uh, this, uh, you know, I, did, I didn't take my file and, 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 and wave it around all to the press. I just put it, put it in my file uh, and uh, I mean, basically that, forgotten so, about it. I mean, that's an interesting take, Mr. Lawrence. So would you say as chairman of any board, if your primary shareholder gives you a steer on something, you would take the view that I should ignore it entirely? I've done that on many occasions. I mean, the fact is that uh, your job as chairman is to do the right thing by the company. I was constantly, as the chairman, being told by shareholders, we want you to do this and that. But in the end, I've always found that if you do what shareholders tell you in the corporate sense, and if it goes wrong, they never say, oh, we told you to do it. They say, why did you do something as silly as that? So I always think, as chairman, you should do what the right thing is, uh, rather than just taking what a shareholder says and just... But the right thing never came close to you tendering your resignation? No, I didn't think it was. No, I don't think it was a resignation issue. We were going to proceed in the morally right way to uh, pay... Is that because you were just in this for personal Sorry? financial benefit? Sorry? Were you just in this for personal financial benefit? Were you my, well... My, my, will, were personal you well financial well benefit. My... Um, my uh, pension is uh, a considerable factor of what my post office salary is. I'm very fortunate to have that position. So I'm not, I'm not in this 
for the Monday one, one jot. What was your I, remuneration, Mr. Stanton? Uh, my remuneration was 150,000, which is half of what I got on the other companies that I do for about three times the work. I mean, this is not a. Um, but you've heard how significant that is compared to the postmasters uh, there's no and question. the sub postmasters no that question. were. Did said... you ever ask to see that increased? No, no, no. I've never asked for an increase in salary. I'm not. I wasn't in it for, for, the, for the money. I got. I got a salary, and I just left it at that. Okay. It's very disappointing, Mr. Sorry. I'm still not convinced we've got a clear answer as to why you decided not to take your concerns to either the Secretary of State or the Minister responsible for the Post Office or Department for Business and Trade Officials or UK Government Investments. And perhaps if you'd spoken to just one of them to raise some concerns, we could have a little bit more faith that, it, that you're not now conjecting this for some kind of political expediency. There's, there's no political experience in this for me. I'm just, a, I'm just a businessman. I'm just, a, but I had no concerns that we were going down the wrong track in terms of paying postmasters uh, at, at a reasonable rate. It, it, if, if it came back to me and said you're, you're proceeding too fast when they saw the checks, that would have been different. But I was perfectly comfortable with the position we were taking, which was we were going to carry on paying postmasters uh, at a decent rate. We're about to move into our fifth hour of hearings, um, but Mr. Lavery, do you want to... Mr. MacDonald? Um, Chair, this has been another unedifying process in Parliament, and Mr. Stoughton lifted the lid on what we already knew was a dysfunctional organisation. It's, it's been taken to new heights today. Um, and all the while, the people that we really care about Postmasters and postmistresses are still no further forward, and I don't suppose their confidence has been um, increased one jot by what they've heard today from any anybody. Um, but just as a final parting question from me, um, in all these circumstances, do you think it's incumbent now upon everybody else who's involved in this process? to give some certainty to those postmasters and postmistresses to come up with legally binding dates by which they should be compensated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think uh, not only that, we actually need to review the cases that have been agreed, because there's no question from what I've read that, that postmasters have signed agreements where they've only taken a fraction of what they thought it was due just to get it out of the way. So it's, so it's a far bigger issue than you've raised in terms of dates. But we need to go back and uh, get justice, even for those that have agreed uh, amounts. So it's, 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 it's way, way bigger than even you suggested, sir. I just wanted to ask, as a chairman of the board, I assume you do evaluations of the executive team. How would you rate Mr. Reid's performance as chief executive? Well, we do do evaluations of the board uh, and uh, uh, in respect of Mr. Reid I would uh, say that it's a, it's, a, it's a very tough job as I've mentioned before tougher job than any of the companies that uh, 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 I've talked about because there's just so many strands to this to this deal so I think he was he was doing fine uh, huge huge pressures on him and therefore as I say I, I must have had Four conversations when he said he was going to chuck it in, and my job was just to be uh, uh, someone that would understand the pressures that he was on, and because I think it'd be very difficult to find a replacement uh, at this stage with the business in the states that, that it's in. So um, I, you know, I think uh, if I didn't think he was doing satisfactory, I'd, I'd have asked to to change things. Did you ever look to increase or decrease his remuneration package? based on his performance on dealing with these legacy issues? Uh, I'm not the chairman of the, the REMCO, but uh, the answer is I got a st strong message from uh, Mr. Shapps when he was Secretary of State. Don't even think about coming for any salary increase. I got a strong message. I got a strong message from Minister Hollingrake. Is that because you asked? Uh, I, I said to him, and I said to him uh, Nick is unhappy with the salary. He said, don't, don't waste a postage stamp coming to talk to me about it. So uh, there's no. So you, but you did try to, to secure a pay rise for Mr. Yeah, Reed. I did. I went to see him and said, look. Despite some of the things we've heard about normal postmasters and sub postmasters 
who were on £20,000 and below. Yeah, I, did you not know that as chairman of the board? Of course the I did. The discrepancy between of, the is, person at the top and the person there, at the bottom. There's, there's, did you not care? There's, uh, of course I care. There's an enormous discrepancy, as of course there is in any other commercial organisation between the person on the shop floor and, 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 the, and the chief executive. So, so of course I care. It's a bit of a, I don't think we're uh, that different from, from, from anywhere else. So, uh, and don't forget, when I went to see Mr. Shapps, I'd only been in the organisation uh, a month or two, so if that. So this wasn't one where, you know, I was a, had detailed issues about knowing that we had all these REM issues uh, or in I mean, terms I'm of government. I'm not sure that's the get out you're hoping for, Mr. Stone, because if, if after a month, given all the problems we know about the post office, you decided to go and ask and lobby for a pay rise for the chief executive at the time, it does indicate you weren't sufficiently over the detail. I was tremendously over the detail. Uh, as a chairman, I'm more involved in the detail than probably most of my colleagues who are chairman because, the, because I'm an accountant. I just uh, do that. But this was very early on uh, in, in my discussions. It was, a, it was a letter drafted by the HR director, which she'd agreed with Nick. But they said, look, will you go along and talk to the Secretary of State? Uh, and I went with her. And the truth is, of course, uh, I saw very quickly that... Um, it was, a, it was a complete waste of time, just, just as when Minister Hollingrate wrote to us in April saying, I'm just fed up with all these errors that are happening in the, in the governance of, of, of REM, and I thought it was a very fair, okay. fair thing to write. Well, look, that draws this panel to a conclusion. Thank you very much, Mr Staunton, for your evidence this afternoon. You have stood by the assertions that you've made in the media that you came away from a meeting with a senior civil servant under the impression that an option was to slow down the pace of redress. Um, you've told us that there isn't a hard ring fence around the money for compensation. That's certainly your understanding. I understand that. You've also given us some pretty bombshell revelations about a boardroom that is in some disarray, a chief executive who is under investigation, and a chief executive who has sought to resign, even though he has just told us on oath um, that he is not. So thank you very much indeed for the evidence to the committee. Can we I just say one thing, Mr. On that Chairman? Can I say one thing? That some some insinuations were raised about the SID process, with which I strongly dis disagree. I've, I've been, uh, I've appointed more SIDs than uh, probably anyone that has been interviewed today by, by some margin, uh, and uh, I've acted absolutely scrupulously and. Uh, Fairly, so I didn't want that to pass. No, nope. well, thank uh, you. If you asked me, I could have given you chapter and verse. But, but that concludes our panel. Order, thank order. You. Well, there, there it is. The uh, chair of the Business and Trade Committee, uh, Liam Byrne, calling that evidence session to a close. And it was quite the evidence session. We heard from the uh, former chair of the. Uh, post office, Henry Staunton, who stands by his claims made in a national newspaper a couple of weekends ago that he was told to slow down the compensation scheme. But that wasn't the only thing that we learned in that session. We also was revealed that there seems to be disarray at the very top of the post office and disagreement between the chair and the chief executive uh, for a period. Uh, Nick Reed was a uh, saying that he was going to be leaving and uh, despite telling the committee on oath that he had never thought about resigning. Our business correspondent, Paul Kelso, has been listening in to the entire thing. And, Paul, there were a couple of moments there where you and I looked at each other like, wow, what are we listening to here? Yeah, and it seemed to floor some of the MPs too. We often build these things up as uh, having a certain amount of political box office because the principles in the post office scandal are all there. That last hour really did take a turn that was unexpected. Uh, let's give you the context first of all. Henry Staunton was the chairman of the post office until earlier this month when he was sacked by Kemi Badenoch, the business secretary. He gave an interview subsequently uh, saying that he'd been told he was carrying the can and also, most damaging of all, that he had, from conversations with Ms Badenoch, particularly a senior civil servant, had been told to go slow on compensation. That was completely counter to the government's policy at the moment, to be seen to be doing everything they can uh, not least bringing in legislation to blanket quash these convictions to speed um, conversation. So it's very toxic. His appearance was prefaced mm -hmm. by a Department for Business official, uh, a director of the post office also, and the senior independent director of the post office, both making allegations about his conduct. One said he'd been erratic, and uh, they both said there were two investigations. One, he'd attempted to stop a whistleblower... Uh, investigation into his own conduct and one that he tried to uh, stop 
an appointment process of an independent director. All quite technical, but nevertheless, point to his credibility. That's important, because he came into the room, he was <laughs> asked about those, and he stuck, first of all, to his... the central claim that there was a ghost low. He was not mistaken on it, he stands by it, he stands by his documentation he's provided, he didn't resolve from it at all. Mm -hmm. he, despite being asked, you're the only person who've heard from today who believes this was the case, but he sticks by it. He then addressed these allegations about his conduct. He said, actually, they arise, they're a technicality arising from a totally separate investigation into the chief executive, Nick Reed, who'd fallen out with his HR director. Mm -hmm. There was an 80-page document about his conduct. Mr Reed had said, I think he said at the end there, four times told him he'd resign, mm -hmm. said he prevented him leaving. Um, this is Nick Reed that we heard from earlier. Uh, who we heard from the hour before Mr Staunton was asked specifically, have you ever considered resigning? He said, on oath, that he hadn't. We heard the chairman of the committee saying that there. Um, he's, Mr Staunton says he was mentioned in passing in this 80-page document compiled by the HR director uh, with whom he's in dispute. He rang up the independent director to say, listen, I think the chief executive needs a bit of support here. The independent director, I think I'm right in reading this, took this as being Mr Staunton trying to potentially close down the investigation. He says he's in there for one paragraph he mm. used. He was alleged to have used politically incorrect language and he says he strenuously denies that. So if that's a lot of bored, intersonine warring, if it sounds like it, it, it is, yeah. one can only imagine what the sub-postmasters are thinking. People looking this. on, absolutely. And Jonathan Gullis, the MP, the Conservative MP, made that point. He said that at one point we're going to have to have a new ITV drama of Nick Reed versus Henry Staunton, not uh, Mr Bates versus the post office, because that is the point, isn't it, here? We're still at this uh, the stage where postmasters are still not receiving the compensation that they are entitled to, and now we're being told that there was huge disagreement at the very top of the post office when they're meant to be taking care of this. Focused on this issue, and I think that is, that is the thing people say. We heard from Alan Bates, uh, what seems like longer than four hours ago, um, uh, and a couple of other sub-postmasters. He was asked about these efforts to compensation. He said, it's incredibly frustrating. It feels like it's going on, been going on for years, mm. and it will never end. Now, um, that's probably not, certainly not what ministers wanted to hear from Alan Bates, given he mm. is the, he's the, he's the touchstone for the sub-postmasters. But what is germane from this is we've had... This was all... This latest focus on this long-running scandal was kicked off by the post office drama at Christmas. What Henry Saunders said, I think, that perhaps will carry some weight, is he said, government and the post office want us to believe that everything was going swimmingly before the drama and this process was underway. Mm. He says that simply wasn't true. When he spoke to the Sunday Times and made these allegations, he was the first person who was being... Honest. Of course, he was the chairman at the time, so he should take responsibility. What it does appear to have lifted the lid on a boardroom at war, directors who are now willing to go into bat to support the government against Mr Staunton, mm. and a man who doesn't need the money, hasn't got the job anymore, and doesn't appear to have a great deal to lose except his reputation, firing back with explosive allegations which will take yet more time, and perhaps another inquiry probably to will. work through to establish... <laughs> Who's right? Yeah, and, and as that goes on, those postmasters are still waiting for their com full compensation to be to be paid. Paul Kelso, really good to have you here. Thank you very much for that, Paul Kelso, our, our business correspondent there. All right, now, on to other news this afternoon.